Blog Talk Radio. Crystal. Yes. I have to do that whole introduction again because for some reason my mic was muted. So here we go again. Okay. Everybody, so sorry. I do not know what's happening today, but we are live. This is Kara Newman. I have as my special co host, Crystal Vandenacker. This is the show about oneness. We're on the Enlightenment Evolution Network, and it is. Sunday, November the 30th, 2014. What I was just saying is today we're going to have a discussion about the subject of fear. And it's something I've been thinking about all week. I brought it up to Crystal and she said she's been talking about it just recently. So to start off, I'm going to play a song by a man named Lon Milo Duquette, who is a mystic. He is a the uh, high magnus of the OTO, but he's also a great musician, and he wrote a song called I'm Scared, and I think it just sort of gets to the heart of some of the stuff going on in society, but it's a good place to start. So please listen and enjoy for the next two minutes, 56 seconds, Lon Milo Duquette singing I'm Scared. My life's in constant danger I'm threatened by each stranger I'm scared they'll club and stab me Scared kidnappers will nab me I'm scared of home intrusion And cultural infusion I'm scared of immigrants And teens in drooping pants I'm scared of sudden sounds I'm scared of mimes and clowns I'm scared of boys in hoodies Scared they will steal my goodies I'm scared of car hijackers Scared of computer hackers I'm scared of mysticism That devil communism I'm scared of social welfare And universal health care I'm scared of foreign accents I'm scared of paying taxes I'm scared of other races and unfamiliar faces. I'm scared of intellectuals. I'm scared of homosexuals. I'm scared of bureaucrats. I'm scared of Democrats. I'm scared of Satanists. Scared of psychiatrists. Scared of my medication. Fear college educations. I'm scared of revolution, theory of evolution. I'm scared of knocks upon my door. I'm scared of homeless and the poor. I'm scared that guys will disrespect me. I'm that girls will just reject me. I'm scared that I look like a fool. I'm scared just like I did in school. I'm scared my mother's ghost still haunts me. Dad's disappointed. Approval taunts me. I'm scared of darkened streets. I'm scared of halal meat. I'm scared of NSA, UN, and CIA. I'm scared of my own shadow. I'm scared of Rachel Meadow. I'm not an evil fellow. My spine's just painted yellow. I'm scared each waking hour. In dreams I cringe and cower Scared that I have no power Wish I lived in a tower Scared of my powerlessness Scared of my cowardice That's why I carry a gun Well, there you go scared of everything. 
<laughs> I know people like that, and I know sometimes, you know, it's easy to get afraid of everything. So it's it, fear. Fear comes in many forms. Don't you agree? Yeah, it does. Yeah. You know, there's the fear of of the unknown. There's the fear of the known. There's the fear of what is wanted. There's the fear of what is not wanted. You name it. Fear comes in every shape and size, and it's you know ready to fit all situations. Yeah. yeah. But what? But what would you say would be the biggest cause of fear? Well, I would say like fear. You know, it's just like. It, when I hear the word, the word fear, mm-hmm. I automatically start thinking about being uh, insecure. Right. That's what I, you know, why why should you be fearful? Why? You know, it's just like, it's also about like, um, um, it's an emotion. And it's, it's, it can be a signal for you about like, okay, why am I afraid and what's behind it? It's just like, in, instead of just, being fear of everything. Well, it, I mean, I think that it can it can have to do with specific situations. In some ways, fears can serve you. In some ways, fears can be an alert to something. For mm-hmm. instance, if you know you have a there's a natural fear we have of things, and rightfully so. Um, if 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 the fear becomes debilitating, that is the the big problem. But you know, for instance, you may be afraid of a. Well, now I I want to say in the beginning it could be fear, but then it just translates to knowing. But it's yeah. not to be. It's not bad to be afraid of certain things. When you're a kid, you know you could be afraid of the dark. It's not that the dark will harm you, but if you're a little child, you know, venturing out into a dark forest or something, you know, there there are things out there where you can get hurt. So that fear can serve you as a warning mm-hmm. to not do something, like having a fear of standing on a ledge over a very high drop. That's a self-preservational fear. Yeah. That's not a bad fear to have, you know, if you, you if you can't, you know, walk up a hill because you're afraid you're going to fall down it, maybe that's too much. But there is a healthy level of fear. And yeah, that's a signal for you to be cautious, you know, just like, okay. And it's, it's maybe also being uh, uh, fearful in unknown situations, but after you... Um, start knowing the situation, then you know, okay, the fear can just be there. Right, and it's okay to let the fear go. And it's yeah. just, you know, if you say, well, I know that I do not want to fall off this hill. I'm not going to go stand on that ledge over there. That's not fear anymore. That's knowing and that's mm-hmm. using your, but initially you can be fearful. Um, but after a while you have to, well, you don't have to, but it's healthier to let it go and just let it become a learning for you. But the fear that we talk about so much in the spiritual world is what? It's the fear of something going wrong, that something is wrong in the totality of everything. And and when we think about the totality of everything, we we know that, you know, or we should know that everything is always okay. But in our fear of something, we focus on either lack or a belief that doesn't serve us, and then we create more yeah. things that, that you know, reinforce that belief and prove to us that we were right all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can be you. You can get pretty pretty um, insecure if you are in that kind of pattern. Well, you can be. I think there's. You know, it was interesting. I, we were having a conversation yesterday um, on a group uh, that I'm with, and this woman called in, and she she has a lot of what some people would term fearful beliefs, but in her fearful beliefs, they had sort of caused her to want to to take action and basically to help people and in her fearful beliefs a lot of people were really um, they were trying to tell her what she was 
what she was talking about was fear. But at the same time, I think people can be afraid of fear. As if, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You know, being afraid, like you'll hear people say, "Well, that's fear. I'm not. I don't. I don't want to have anything to do with it." And then they'll run away from it. And I think being afraid of fear is also is just as bad. I'd like what I'm trying to say is sometimes you can look at something that's negative or fearful, and not get fearful yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, it's if you're really strong in what you believe, then the fear is not going to jump up and grab you. No, it's just like just like I said, that it's just a signal for you. Yeah, it's just a signal. So you told me that earlier you were talking to someone and they were they were mentioning fear. What? Did, how did that come up? What were you saying? Well, I was on a on a show, mm-hmm. and someone was sitting there, and uh, she said, "I don't know what's wrong. Uh, I I just have a, um, a feeling that I'm afraid that I won't get enough income and." The energy flow isn't flowing right in, mm-hmm. in the right direction, and all the customers stay uh, are staying away. What is that? And I was just standing there, and uh, there were some people who had walked by, and I said, "Well, you know, first of all, you have to let go your fear about no customers coming in, right. because otherwise you are going with that f- a fearful energy, with that fearful flow." And while I was standing there, I, I literally felt uh, uh, not my fear, but the, the you know, I, I literally could feel the the, the energy of fear. Mm-hmm. And what I did was like I started cleaning it out, you know, like I said, and I started to talk to that woman in positive ways. I said, well, okay, please let go of your fears and just in, uh, say to yourself, there's nothing to be afraid of. It's just the energy, and it's my own energy, and I have to. Uh, get in my own power place, and then it will be working out fine. Uh-huh. And but I I I do have to admit that I was feeling a lot of fear and anger on that uh-huh. spot. Right. But it wasn't well, mine or hers. It was, it was just there, you know. So, uh-huh. so we were talking about that. Well, I you know I I wonder in that kind of situation, and this is maybe. Um, this is maybe a stretch, but we always think, oh, don't be afraid of something, don't be afraid of something. Mm-hmm. And then when things are not going well in some way, we sort of blame ourselves. Oh, I must be full of fear. Oh, I must be full of that. Sometimes though, things don't go in the way we want them to. Yeah. And it, it may or may not be about fear. It may or may not be about anything. But we always try to point our finger at something, you know, you know what I'm trying to say? So maybe like mm-hmm. if she's sitting there and she's not getting any customers, maybe what she's selling somebody doesn't want. Mm-hmm. Is that fear or is that just what is? Yeah. Now, sometimes, you, you know, we know it from our own experience. Sometimes you are in a place where it's just, the the dead zone, you know, where nothing is coming or uh-huh. people aren't coming, right. you know, and then you can just say like, okay, now I'm afraid that I won't get customers, that I'm not good enough, and you know, all those kind of sentences right. people so can think. Right, so basically what happens is you, you get into a situation of judgment mm-hmm. against yourself. Yeah. And you create a fear that really has nothing to do with the situation. And I can mm-hmm. honestly say that I think the reason I bring that up is because I think that that's the way most fear is. In fact, there is nothing to be afraid of. Um, it wouldn't matter if she was afraid of um, afraid of not making money. I think the fact is she wasn't making money, and so yeah. therefore she became afraid. Now, yeah. but I don't know that necessarily... If she wasn't afraid, she would make money either. Well, after, you know, what what what, what really was funny, after I told her to mm-hmm. let go about her fearful beliefs and thinking mm-hmm. about, okay, maybe I'm doing something wrong and what's wrong with the energy and all this stuff, and I literally said to her, like, listen, you just have to accept that it is what it is and just make the best out of it. After I, I said that to her, I walked away mm-hmm. and... Uh, customers were coming to her. Right. You know, so she really 
I said, yeah, she really was starting to uh, let go all of those those beliefs. So even in this situation, she was starting to, um, uh, you know, ha- shine a little more. So people were coming over to see her. So, so again, it probably wasn't the fear of of. To, to, what the situation was, but it was her yeah. beliefs about it mm-hmm. that created the barrier. It'd be interesting to see if that continued throughout the whole day, if she was able to continue, you know, not being afraid. But I, but there's a part of me that thinks that it's the fear is judgment against ourselves. It's the feeling of we we don't have enough, we aren't enough, something's going to happen to us. That mm-hmm. really is outside of the situation totally yeah because you can walk into any situation and you can approach it from a you know if if you if you're at a show like that and no one's coming to you there's no stuff and you're not afraid about it and you can be joyful full, full about it then you didn't get any customers and you're like oh well no problem yeah. it doesn't bother you because you're not afraid but you could be in the same situation and not get any customers and you're fearful, fearful and all mm-hmm. you're doing is trying to point the finger at yourself to figure out what you did wrong. Pointing the finger on yourself or mm-hmm. pointing or other your, people, other or, people. And to me, it's like if I, in this situation, it's really like uh, three dimensional, you mm-hmm. know? So really fear based and getting stuck in those patterns as well. So, yeah. Well, fear is, I mean, like I said, fear can serve you and it can de- completely debilitate you. Just, yeah. we have, we have a couple of people who are, who are on the, on the, uh, blog talk that I can see. And just, you know, Crystal and I are going to have a conversation. We're going to just let it go wherever it goes tonight. But if you want to join in the conversation, you can call in, you can dial 347-308-8788, and you can push one on your keypad to let us know that you have your hand up. Or if you've ca- called in on Skype, then just pull up the little Skype dial button and push push one, and it will let us know that you have a question. If not, just enjoy the conversation, but we're going to keep going. I also need to give a quick disclaimer, which I didn't get to do in the beginning because normally it's attached to my intro music but just to just to give the disclaimer for the show just to say that the views discussed and held um, by about oneness and myself and our and any of my guests are not necessarily the views of the enlightenment evolution network so they're, therefore they may be the views though but we're not we can't say it is the views <laughs> <laughs> they may be or they may not be I don't know but I don't think we're going to talk about anything to uh, deliver we do have a, uh, someone who has a question should we take a question yeah, okay Okay. hello this is Karen and this is Crystal hi how are you I see live hello the Skype hey it's Roxy has can you hear up. me hi baby oh hi Roxy Hi. 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 Hi, Crystal. Hi. Congratulations. I haven't got to talk Hi. to you. Hi. Baby. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're so welcome. And I saw a couple of the pictures on Facebook. How darling, how gorgeous. What a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful. Another, let's say, opportunity to express humanity in that baby. Booyah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Roxy, you outside? Uh, I'm going to go back inside. Sorry, I know I can hear the wind. Yeah, Sorry. That's the wind at your back. We can, <laughs> <laughs> we can hear the wind. I thought that that might be you when I saw that live, but I wasn't sure. And so I didn't want to go. I think Roxy and Sweetheart's on cold, but I don't know. <laughs> Are you there? Yeah, so no. yeah I'm here. I was okay. just listening to the conversation. Did you hear that song at the beginning? Yeah, that was like, wow. I was listening to it, and as it was going on, it was adding more and more and more fears. And I was like, wow, how does anyone move? <laughs> you know? Think about all how the does things anyone... that were on... Right. I'm sorry, yeah. But think of all the things that we're constantly told to be afraid of. Exactly. And you know you what's know? funny? Here's what's funny that I saw in that song. Just right now I realize this. It's like, okay... 
as the song are going along, people are listening to those particular parts and it goes, yeah, I am afraid of that. Oh, I'm not afraid of that. Yeah, I yeah. am afraid of that. Um, so you can see just through the individual idea of yourself and your beliefs how fear affects you or it doesn't. And some other people right. will look at other fears themselves. And I think that is like a big clue. It's like, wait a minute, guys. The only reason why you're fearing, you know, your shadow or a guy in a hoodie or, you know, a guy with droopy pants, you know, or taxes is because that's your individual belief of that idea that you must, like, you were, or I don't know, you were you bought into or you validated that is something to fear, you know. And I think that was a yeah. great service. I, I love that idea of that to, you know, show you, hey, maybe I don't need to be afraid of this because they're not. They're not. They're not. Maybe I can understand from their perspective how they don't fear, you know, and look into where, like like what you said earlier, Crystal, is where does that fear base from? What is, where, did, where is yeah. it birthed from? You know, what right. what Behind idea it, of myself? You know? yeah. Exactly. And and then, Karen, I loved how you asked, where does fear, you know, what what is the biggest cause of fear, I think, is how you stated it. And I was like, yeah. and I had the chuckle, well, you know, coming into humanity, <laughs> we chose the polarity. <laughs> I mean, well, you, you know, know thing, you know, go ahead. It's, well, yeah, just being born is kind of, you know, kind of freaks us out. You know? that's, that's why babies are moving a, a lot, you know, and they just are born, you know. Well, what's yeah. interesting is I'm reading a book. Roxy's going to laugh. I'm reading this book right now called The ah. Mystic Journey. It's for the guest of my show of the Tuesday edition of I my show you. for this week. Now I know. <laughs> now you know why you're laughing. Because yesterday we were in a chat and she's like, who's your guest tomorrow? And I, and I said, well, this person whose book I need to read very fast. But <laughs> but what's so interesting funny. is his his book is called Mystic Journey. It's, it's getting to the uh, heart of your soul's journey. It's by Robert Atkinson. And he's going to be my guest when I'm on the Pyramid One Network on Tuesday. But he's talking about that the soul um, comes in. And there's a story about uh, a Jewish mystical legend called the angel and the unborn soul. And basically it's that the soul is in such a nice, warm, cuddly place before it's brought into the birth and that it's afraid to come to earth because it's seen everything. So that's why we forget how bad it's going to be here. (laughs) I don't, I I wrote in the thing that I don't necessarily agree with that analogy. I think we come forth joyfully, but it's interesting because this is written from a man's perspective that it has to be better there. And it's pretty scary here. So, (laughs) <laughs> That's you know, funny. But, but I, I, I wanted to say, you said, where does it come from? I have an answer to that question. Um, I, I wanted to see what Crystal would say, but now that you're on, and I hope that you can just stay on with us because we'll have a, we'll have a three way. We'll have a three way. Um, <laughs> awesome. But um, <laughs> I did a meditation a while ago, and I wanted to understand about fear. You know, and I, I, I was talking to my guides, and they sort of took me on a – it's the first time they ever did it, but they sort of took me on a vision quest, mm-hmm. and they showed me the first people, um, quote, unquote. And I don't know if it was really the first people or if it was just a beautiful shadow play they played for me in my, in my meditation, but they showed me people, the first people that were here. And then they showed me the first instance, not a physical death of a person, but a physical death of plants that they saw. Like they saw a tree fall over and die, and they saw several things around them die. And then they realized that things were not, quote-unquote, forever. Right. So they got the idea that possibly there would be lack. Well, if there's only 10 trees here and they slowly start to die, then maybe I can't get my own tree or I won't, there won't be any more fruit for us. So we, they started to have this idea of there isn't enough and and then in that isn't enough came the idea oh, yeah. of I need yeah. I need to get some before you get all of it. And right. that's where it really came from. 
And the fear was in believing that there's not enough, ultimately. And the fear of death came because they didn't, at that point, hadn't seen the full cycle of life. And they didn't understand that things come and go. But ultimately, everything's coming back or staying. So it was a really interesting sort of sort of teaching of, you know, the first fear, the fear first, the fear comes from the belief in lack. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, and for some people, I, I they've like experienced that. lack, a lot of lack. Right, but it's so the fear has a basis. Perceived lack. Right. Yes, perceived lack. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's again, interesting that's because part of the, the people who perceive the most lack are generally the people who have the most. Yes, that's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Most, most of the hoarding, most of the, the security. The... Keep going. Yeah. And then most of the time they have they have the the most and then they are fearful of losing it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They fight for it. Yeah. Because yeah. what do you always hear when people say they go to a really poor society? They'll say, oh, the people there, you know, they had nothing, but they were so joyful and so happy. And then you've got the richest people in the world walking around with pusses on their face, all pissed off about life. <laughs> you know? I love, they have p- pusses on their face. <laughs> well, can you imagine? I mean, you see people, what are their big problems, really? You know? A well, child right. throwing a temper tantrum. Get ready, Crystal. But a child throwing a temper tantrum because he can't have that last piece of candy or whatever. You know, as they say in New York, you don't know from lack. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know. It's already, what it's, start, it's already starting right now. Really? Yeah. Oh. Even, even when he's a little baby. I take away his bottle and he starts like, I want to have more, you know. Start crying. So yeah. take it away. Oh, yeah. And why did you take his bottle? Don't take his bottle. If it if it is empty, <laughs> it's empty. You know. <laughs> when he's done, he's done. <laughs> but it, you know, it's true. So you know, the thing is, is just. I guess if if the cause of fear is the belief in lack, then the belief to change is the belief in lack, or the belief that, that there is lack. So there's that there's uh, the, 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 the you need to start to believe that there's really a lack of lack. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, Karen, let me hear. Let me give I'm you this. Sorry, I cracked myself up. I'm sorry. <laughs> for me, living in the moment. For me, living in the moment, and knowing, and trusting, and and I think that's an element that is, for me, crucial. Trusting the moment, not. One minute, not two seconds from now, but the moment is filled with the two elements that concern me the most in understanding my journey, the needs of sustaining the body, security in the fashion of shelter and food, the fundamentals, right, and the amount of knowledge that I have in the moment, not needing to know anything else in the next moment. In other words, I don't need to know more. I have everything I need right now, therefore no lack. So I have no lack of food because I trust. I have no lack of shelter because I trust. And I know I have no lack of knowledge because everything I need to know is in the perfect moment of creation of now. So therefore, I have no lack and my life is joyous. It's wonderful. It's well, beautiful. I, I, it's out of control. I think that that's cool. I think that's really cool what you're saying. Are you still outside because we still have some wind going on here? I'm coming back inside. I had to move because my <laughs> <coughs> the Cleveland Browns and uh, the Ravens are playing on two different things, and my dad likes both teams. So it gets a little emotional, but I'm going to go upstairs. <laughs> <But keep going. laughs> okay, well, I, you know, I think I agree with what you're saying, but I, I and, and I don't disagree. I would like to add as an addition, though, I'm not going to I'm not going to do what they do in improv and say no because I'm going to say yes and. I I'll say yes to what you're saying exactly. Right. But for the people who are starving uh-huh. and don't have anything, where is their food coming from in that moment when they really don't have anything? You know what I mean? Like we can say it from our place of abundance like I have enough food. I have enough this. 
because in the moment we do. But for the people who don't, so let me ask, what about that? Uh, let me ask you that. They chose. See, I still believe that you don't see that they chose that to represent an idea. They knew they were suffering. You chose your abundance that you have right now for this is your mm-hmm. part of the experience. Right. I'm sure you were starving at one time. I'm sure you were a slave at one time. I'm sure you were beaten down and, and kept under wraps at one time, sometime to experience that portion of humanity. So I look at them, and they serve a purpose to get the entire world to say, wait a minute, we have enough. We're just, Mm -hmm. let's say, hoarding, or maybe we're selfish because we're fearing. So the ones Mm -hmm. that were born by the grace of God into being a whitey tidy in in a rich Republican family, maybe that would help them see that maybe that's not me to be what I was born into. Maybe I'm here to change it. I don't know. But there's so many ways we can look at that. But I well, there absolutely are, love what's popped into my mind. And, I, and sure. I'm glad you brought that up about being a whitey tidy because it's yeah. very interesting. I had a guy staying in my house this last week. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah, the guy knocked over the Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I won't laugh. Sorry. But anyway, he you know what he he said to me which was interesting and I hadn't thought about it before, but it was quite an interesting perspective. He said to me, you know, and and I can't be anything other than what I am, so I don't know um what I haven't experienced this, but if but he brought it up so it's a real experience for him. And he of said course. to me, you know, you're a white woman. Right. And I said, yes. And he said, you know, already when you go somewhere, that's your first passport. Before you ever take out your passport and says where you're from, you're already a white woman. And that, um, that by itself says enough. And, mm-hmm. and we were talking about in Indian society, um, we were just talking about how uh, different races and everything were received. And basically, you know, in in the Indian society, because India is now expanding so amazingly and their economy is growing, you know, they're really, I mean, for a a country with over a billion people, you know, they have, they're just now sort of coming into their own in a, in a world power sense. Mm -hmm. But for them, and I, and I, please, if anyone's Indian and I say this incorrectly, I do not mean this with any disrespect at all. So I just want to preface it. But what he said was for them to stand alongside the United States or, or the UK is a big thing for them only because they were oppressed by England for so very long. Right. So there is, so there is this sort of in born goal within each one of them to be seen equally. Now, I didn't sure. see him as unequal, but he right. sees himself as having to prove himself as being as good as. I did not see him. I, I, if anything, I revere the Indian people with incredible uh, awe only because they're the home of Hinduism. You know, mm-hmm. So for me, that's you know, that's the stuff. So I mm-hmm. didn't, this was a totally new view in my right. mind, you know? And so how yeah. does that relate to fear? What, what the subject is, is that his fear, at least in my perception and based on his words, was of not being seen as being equal, not being seen as good enough, even though that was not at all my thought. Right, but then and he was feeling the need to prove himself, um, not just to me, but to the world. And maybe there yeah. are others out there that he has had to prove himself to. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I can't. I I don't know his whole life. But anyway, it was just an interesting thing that was a little bit shocking to me because I I had never considered that. But of of course, if I am the white woman who apparently you know, doesn't doesn't um, encounter those prejudices, then maybe 
maybe I can't really speak to it. But being a woman, I definitely have encountered prejudices. I think, you know, we're all women here. <laughs> Either, <laughs> you know, we're all women here now. And, mm-hmm. you know, we can all speak to prejudices. We can all speak to the fear that is born out of needing to feel equal or to feel accepted or any of that. Maybe that's a good way, that's a good thing to talk about as well. Well, I think that's a great thing because, okay, well, let's just talk about my direct experience of becoming a transgender to the world. You know, mm-hmm. I'm 40. When well, we're getting your alias. And I'm 40. Yeah. Okay, I was hmm. my aliens here. I was what forty four <laughs> when I transitioned full time. I'm forty eight now, so I've been four four years full time. And the most believable and, and 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 the most let's say believable wonderful aspect of this whole thing, as soon as I stop fighting to be equal and just loving myself in the moment, there was no more fear. And then my the, my that's mirror what, reflected back. Yeah. yeah, and then yeah. my that's mirror what, reflected back to me. Hey, Roxy. By the way, this is your universe. So as long as you love yourself as you are and know that you chose this for a certain idea to give back to the other as a portion of all that is, God expressing itself as a human, if you will, and that is who I am, that's when the whole mirror changed. That's when the release of acceptance, belonging, wanting them to acknowledge me, they don't need to acknowledge me because they're on their own journey. And I'm representing right. that, and whether they choose to understand it or not is no concern of mine. But I know one right. thing I've done, offered my love. Booyah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that it's anything and anything. It's almost, you know, I want to say you just have to face the fear. Um, and facing fear can be scary, <laughs> you know? <laughs> It's, oh yes. But, but if you do face it, it does dissolve. It really does dissolve, um, especially when it's a, a fear that's um, founded in it's 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 really a self fear. But from the most part, and I guess you know, there's always going to be the exception. But for the most part, if you do face the fear, mm-hmm. it does dissolve. Um, I had a situation, and this is totally not uh, related at all, but I'll tell you, when I was a child, I had braces and I did not like to go to the dentist. I didn't like to go to the orthodontist. I was supposed to go like every two weeks to have my braces tightened. And then I would go on the way home from school and I walked to school and I could walk to the orthodontist. And every time it was my appointment, instead of going right toward the orthodontist, I would go left towards home. And my mom would get a call and they would reschedule my appointment and Basically, you know, I just had this, then I would be afraid to go to the orthodontist because I had skipped my last three appointments and I was afraid they're going to yell at me. But plus the fact that I didn't like the fact that they tightened my braces and my mouth hurt and my head hurt and everything for about three or four days in severe pain. So there was this whole fear around going there. But finally, I just, you know, I had sort of used every excuse to not go and I had not gone enough and the doctor sat me down and he said if you don't start coming to your appointments Karen you are never going to get your braces off well that was nice and, to give me that well, fear <laughs> well, great doctor and I was That's already well I was already a senior in high school and I'd had braces for six years. I'd had braces through my entire – I had had braces since I was 12. And so he said, if you don't start coming – I had to be a junior, sorry. If he said, if, he said, if you don't start coming, you're never going to get these braces off. You're going to wear them into college. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, okay. So I just – even though I was afraid, even though I didn't like it, even though it scared me every time they stuck those metal things in my mouth and twisted those wires and did all those things. And I'm saying shaking like fear. I did not like it. It scared the bejesus out of me. But I finally started to go. And then I realized after going that the fear of going was more scary than the actual event when I got there. Of course. Because that's what fear is yeah. before it actually even yeah. occurs. That's where fear is present, right? Right. So then I just did start going, and 
you know, I, it was sort of a lesson for me of like finally getting there. And even though it was painful and even though I didn't like it and even though it still hurt and even though I had the same, you know, discomfort in my mouth for three or four days, I was willing to go through it. And then yeah. I wasn't afraid of it anymore. So I sort of learned the lesson of if I'll just go for it and go through it anyway. Even if I'm afraid, even if I have apprehension, if I'll just face it, I know it's probably not going to be as bad as I ever think it's going to be. And I would say 99% of the time that's true. As it is, yeah. You know? Absolutely. And I yeah. like what you said, face your fears. Because when, see, I remember there was a lady on Facebook a couple of weeks ago who posted that she's leaving. She wanted to move out of San Antonio, a friend of a friend. She told me about it and I read it. Because, you know, and leave her problems behind. And now let's go. But her fears are going to go, oh, okay, I can't move over there with her. Because, well, they're her fears. So wherever you are, ever everybody, you are that fear, no matter where it is. So a change of location doesn't solve fears. It is you changing your view of fears that changes it. And the fears are right there. So get to know them. Get intimate with them. Say hello. Let's talk about this. Let's see what's really uh, where you're stemming from, like you know, Crystal said, you know, I think you got to face that understanding. One quick example is like I, you know, being transgender, in my first part of, you know, now I'm just androgynous or a male and female, it doesn't matter. I'm just whatever the moment is. But before I was like wanting to be that, but I was so fearful. You would you would look at different parking lots like of a convenience store. I used to drive and know what convenience store didn't have too many people present because mm -hmm. I didn't want too much interaction. So I had to drive out of my way literally because I was afraid to go into a place that had a lot of, you know, people because my mind thought, well, more people, more chances of someone's not going to, you know, do this and there's going to be some kind of confrontation. And I got a few things, but very little, nothing really large that I feared but then just one day I said, I mean, God, this is right next to my house. I'm going to go in there. So my whole change of attitude towards my self changed the mirror. I am this. I love myself. I am this. So I'll let the chips where the chips may fall, however you say that. And that's what changed it. So facing the fear and knowing that I am creating that out of some belief system, my approach to it changed. My view of it changed because of the experience of the fear that was causing me. Like you said, you know, you were fearing more of the actual idea of it until you did it. And then the fear said, oh, that's not really real. Okay, bye. That kind of idea. Beautiful. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. I what, I what I wanted, what was popping in my head as you were saying that is, you know, you you did something that, that I will I won't do in this lifetime most probably and probably crystal won't or you know a lot of people won't but you you literally like changed your your gender and you went from one to the other and mm -hmm. your fear to go in a convenience store you know made you go sort of out of your way to avoid mm -hmm. confrontation but yes. there was never a, a I mean was the fear ever so great where you thought oh I've made a mistake Maybe I need to not, no. you know, change back. Well, so then, the you know what I mean? So yeah. your desire to be yourself Bingo. is so strong yes, to know yourself. Point. You're like, this is me. I'm being my true self. So oh, yeah. in being your true self, really being your true self, even even any kind of situation that would come up, it's not going to, you know, change your your decision to be your true self, even if there right. was a confrontation, you know. I would still be. And me, I think right. that's the thing, because the confrontation, if it had just happened or if it didn't happen, is just another experience. Right. Do you know what I mean? So Absolutely. it may or may not have happened, and that's the point I want to make, is that the experience of the confrontation or whatever you encounter doesn't, negate your who I am. choice to be who you are. Yep. Right? Bingo. And that's why when people try to tell other people how to be, it's like I always say you can't yell somebody into love. You can't sit there and scream <laughs> at them and tell them 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> you're full of fear, you stupid bastard. Yeah. You know, that's not going to change them. Yeah. It's not going to, you You know what I mean? Because if they're being their true self, then right. no matter what you say to them, in whatever tone, screaming or not, is not going to make any difference. Because if you're standing true in yourself, you're standing true in yourself. <laughs> So Absolutely. maybe the maybe the solution to fear is to stand true in yourself and Be accept yourself whatever in the comes moment. as an experience. And yeah. whatever know, comes. And also what knowing that, that behind fear is a lesson, you know? Because yeah. what what she said, yes, I will never do what what she did, you know, Be, uh, mm-hmm. uh change myself. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But what I can say is that I, that it's for me it's also very recognizable when I was just younger and I had to uh, and I was born in a very, uh, uh, my dad is, is, is Catholic, you know, and a really uh, conservative person. And I came home and I had to say like, hey, listen, I'm going to get married one day, but it's not going to, to be with a guy, you know. Right. So I, and I started also like, I had to fear and I was walking around with those things and try to get away from my family and I didn't want to have the confrontation until the day that I said like, hey, this is me and, I'm a, and I am I am going to face the fears and I'm just love myself for who I am, you know, so. Yeah. Oh, and that works. <laughs> oh, yes, it does. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and, and what happened is that all the environment was also starting to change. Bingo. Yeah. They also Very go. good. Of the, the the beliefs of fear and all this stuff, you know. So, yeah. Well, it's interesting because you know my my thing is not anything like that. But you know, when I was a born again Christian and I was going to school, I was afraid of the people there a lot of the times because I knew they were judging me. I, in the end of it, I didn't care because I wasn't going to, you know, it wasn't going to alter my decision to express my love for God. But there is, I have to, you know, there is a little intimidation where you realize that people are not talking to you because they Mm -hmm. think you're a Jesus freak. (laughs) 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 But can you imagine you are in love with God and you're afraid of other people, what they're going to think of you. I mean, come on, you know, it's just... It's just ridiculous. Like, you've made this decision to be who you are. You've decided, I'm I'm dedicating my life to this, or I am this. And then you walk into the world, and then there's the fear of what other people think of you. It, it, it's, it's you know, you, you hear it from, you know, African Americans, like, especially mm-hmm. like Maya Angelou, you know, she would say, be a proud black woman, walk into the world with your head high. Well, I mean, change black woman to any of those things. Be proud of who you are. Stand with your hand held high. Be yourself. Yeah. You know? Very good. Because the exactly. people that are afraid of you or, or, or making fun of you or wanting you to be afraid are just as afraid as, as you are. In every way. <laughs> Most of the time, they are, they are afraid of the unknown, you know? Yes, yeah. For something they don't know. Well, that goes down to the bullying, Yeah. you know? I don't know. Was anyone in in our conversation bullied at all? Yes. Yeah. When I was on on high school, you know, and when I had my coming out, Uh they started bullying me. But to be honest, I didn't care. Because the more they started bullying me, the more I was walking with my head high and being proud, you know? Right. (laughs) So, yeah. Because I was, as young as I was then... I knew, just in a knowing, I knew like, okay, it's because they are afraid, because they don't know, uh, they don't know anything about me. They just, it's just like being just a mental towards me. So they are just well, afraid. Well, it's afraid of the unknown. They had, they're confronted with something yeah. that doesn't fit above the cultural beliefs that they were taught, that they hold sacred, because they were spoon-fed that from their environment of parents or family or whatever. And then all of a sudden, yeah. someone's saying oh, no, I'm not with you, I'm with this, myself, over here. And they're going, wait a minute, that doesn't work. 
because this is what this says or this is what this book says or this is how mm-hmm. it is. And since I believe it, you're not agreeing with what I am, then F you. You know, you're not right. You yeah. need to fit my world. Well, no, you don't. And that's what we're learning. Right, this right. is what this is about. This is what we're shifting to. So the allowance of it to occur is awesome. But also what I think what you all this whole part of this conversation is this. Be yourself to discover yourself. And in that is that you fall in love with yourself. The mirror changes. Like you said, the environment changes, Crystal, because you yes, are indeed, changing yeah. your view of it. And you are the environment. Oh, yeah. Love yeah. that. Yeah. I think something is so thrilled right now. now I'm the oh, you're side. alien. And unfortunately. Unfortunately. Oh, you sound like an alien. Okay. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like now, you do sometimes. Yeah. yeah. It's the same okay. thing when, have, when you do it with Bob's show. Great, great. Okay, okay. I'm going to, I have to hang up the call and call right back in. So hold, hold tight, everybody. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, hold tight to what? <laughs> Please stand by for this station identification. You're listening to About Oneness with your host, Karen Newman. Special guests? Crystal Vandenacker, and a special, special outside guest, surprise, Roxy Swainhart. We're here talking about fear, so please call in. I don't memorize the number, so pardon me. And join in on the fear games, and let's see what we can discover about the illusion of fear. Booyah. What do you think, Crystal? Good? I don't know. She got kicked off, too. I don't even know if anyone's hearing me. This is so exciting. Mm-hmm. I'm going to update you on the Cleveland game. Roxy. Yeah, I'm here. How, am I I'm here. Can you hear me? Again? Yeah, I can hear you. No, you're... Yeah, you're clear. Okay, perfect. So... I've learned that I have to stop my Skype and start it again. So, oh, yeah. That but but what I was, huh? No, that's good. Keep going. Okay. What I was going to say is, I was while we were talking about that and bullying, and we've kind of gone around in circle. But I, I think about the children, some of these children who are bullied in school, and they go through such an experience, and then they end up taking their life because of extreme Mm -hmm. bullying, which seems to be relentless. Mm -hmm. And, you know, on the one side, I I know that those ones that take their lives and everything, you know, for them they may feel like the only way out. On On the soul level, it's probably to teach other people that bullying is just wrong and all the things about it. Um, but, you know, for anyone who's listening that's ever been bullied and you know who you are, you know, Crystal and Roxy and I are all, you know, in our, you know, we're not, we're not 20 and we're not 15 and we're not 12. Mm. So we're not being bullied now, but we all did have situations where, you know, everyone was not maybe the kindest to us and we had to learn to stand up for ourselves. So, you know, at the same, as much as, you know, we've come through it, just always realize that you can come through it too. And if you are being bullied, please call the helpline for bullying. And I know that there are those. You can Google it or call your counselor or call into the show. It's no problem. But just realize that it's not, it's not forever. You're not alone. And you're not, not alone. alone. Yeah. And, and I'll Absolutely. tell you this. Anybody who's different enough to get the attention of a bunch of people is pretty spectacular because anybody Ooh, yeah, that's absolutely. taking the time to focus on you and point out anything about you has nothing going on in their lives. You're the most exciting <laughs> thing going on. Yes, and most interesting for them. As exactly. Well. So take it as a compliment, but don't take right. it personally. Just right. notice that if this, if those things are happening to you, that you are a unique person, you know, and right. you have something you have something to add in this world. That's right. So Make your uniqueness, your yeah. uniqueness is definitely worth sticking around for. So uh, while I, we're on I that was, note, 
Oh, go ahead. I'd like to say real quick on that, though. It's like you're telling your own story. So if your story is great, that's what attracted those attention. So keep being yourself because yourself and your own, let's say, love is your story. Don't be afraid to tell your story about yourself. Make sense? That's right. Shake it yeah. off. Shake it off, in the words of Taylor Swift. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Listen, we have to take um, a few minutes, 10 minutes and 18 seconds by uh by the likes of it, to play some network announcements. So if everyone wants to take a break, get some water, listen to the announcements, turn up your radios extra loud <laughs> so, that, <laughs> so that you can hear them, but definitely take a few minutes for yourself. <laughs> and and we'll be back in 10 minutes, 18 seconds, okay? Love you all. See you yeah. there. Stay, oh, stay around, Rock. Okay. I will. I will. Hi, this is Karen Newman from the show About Oneness. And here's what's coming up on the Enlightenment Evolution Network 1 and 2, starting on Monday, November the 24th, until Sunday, November the 30th. Simply put, Rob Gauthier, founder of the EEN and the host of the show that started it all, the Enlightenment Evolution Hour, has put together the greatest metaphysical radio network ever. Seven days a week, we have shows that will aid you on your path to enlightenment, evolution, and ascension. On EEN1, on Mondays, 7.30 p.m. Pacific, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, is Heart to Heart Talk Radio with your host, Daniel Scranton. Join Daniel and his featured guests discussing a wide variety of metaphysical topics. Daniel channels the creators, the Hathors, Ophelia the Fairy, and Archangel Michael, and the latest, the Unicorn Collective. Daniel and his guests will take phone calls and questions, and it's sure to generate high-frequency discussions. You can find more about Daniel at his website, danielscranton.com, and also on Facebook. Go to the Events tab on Daniel's website to learn more about Daniel's upcoming events. Daniel's guest on the 17th of November is his lovely wife, Lana Boss, where they will be discussing the importance of living where you want to live. And then on the 24th of November, Susan Fittner, author of From Your Vision Board to Your Bedroom, will be Daniel's guest. On Tuesday at noon, also 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, please join hosts Megan Crandallmeyer and Rachel Archelaus for Radio Inspiration, Expression, and Abundance. For their show, Soulful Preneur, spiritual business specialists Rachel and Megan will bring you inspiring conversations with people who are living their soul purpose. Frequent guests include psychic mediums, channelers, coaches, artists, and authors. They end every show with psychic readings and business coaching. Your questions about your spiritual business or life purpose journey are welcome. On the 24th of November, Rachel and Megan's guest is Robert Scheinfeld, author of Busting Loose from the Money Game. Wednesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, is the show that started it all, the Enlightenment Evolution Hour with host Rob Gauthier. Rob channels Treb on the first Wednesday of each month and will take callers' questions. On the third Wednesday, we'll have special guests such as guest channelers and other metaphysical teachers. The other two Wednesdays are freestyle call-in shows to discuss whatever callers have on their minds. Tune in to Rob on Wednesday nights, and you can also find him at trebchanneling.com and on Facebook at the Enlightenment Evolution Network group page. Rob's guest on the 28th of November will be Lee Harris. If you are interested in the CE5 Day Channeling Workshop in Asheville, North Carolina, go to trebchanneling.com, where you can find more details on how to register. Starting on Sundays from September 14th, trebchanneling.com offers hour-long meditation classes. Please go to trebchanneling.com to register. Another project near and dear to Rob's heart is the much-anticipated sequel to the groundbreaking film Tuning In called Tuning In Now. The movie will feature channelers such as Daryl Anka and Bashar, Lee Carroll and Cryon, and our very own Rob Gauthier and Treb. Tuning In Now will explore the amazing work of today's top channels and how they are helping to awaken the consciousness of the planet. The film is in fundraising stages at the moment, and with a contribution for as little as $15 all the way up to $50, you can help make sure that this film is made. Please go to Indiegogo.com, that's Indie, I-N-D-I-E, Gogo, G-O-G-O, dot com, and type in the search 
tuning in now to. That's the number two. Tuning in now with the number two. On Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, join host Philip Malika with the Consciousness Evolution Hour. Join Philip and his special guests and co-hosts as they discuss the shift, ascension, timelines, metaphysical concepts, and the fifth dimension. Find Philip at the Consciousness Evolution 2.0 group page on Facebook and on YouTube. On Friday, the Earth Experience with your host, Kalina Angel, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific. The Earth Experience explores our soul's expansion through our human experience on Earth. Kalina will help you to navigate and expand through the exciting confusions that we are manifesting as new 5D beings. And now, our newest addition to Enlightenment Evolution Network 1, Victoria Vives Kyung, hosting Earth Sky People Radio, will now be with you on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, for your start to an inspiring week. This Saturday, November 29th, she will share more powerful tips on how you can thrive on Earth. Earth Sky People Radio, your bridge between heaven and earth. Subjects will include planet Earth becoming part of an intergalactic society, star seeds and extraterrestrial life, living in oneness with one another, with Mother Earth and with life beyond Earth, the Interstellar Alliance, also known as the Galactic Federation of Light, music, frequency and sound healing, question and answer interviews, shamanism, ancestral wisdom, and the star nations, self-sustainative and regenerative living, and much, much more. Go to victoriavives.com forward slash radio where people can start submitting questions for upcoming shows. Victoria's guest on Tuesday, November 18th is special guest Jesse Ann Nichols George, sharing about her compassion tour and sharing tools with you for maintaining personal identity, being in crowds, and or being around those that may not share your interests or values. On Sundays, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Pacific, is my show about oneness. About Oneness is a weekly radio program focused on celebrating the ongoing conscious awakening of our planet and our realization of oneness. I'm an American originally from Charleston, South Carolina, now living in Europe, The Hague, the Netherlands. I'm an integrated channel, medium, Reiki master, and metaphysical teacher. I have a varied and diverse background, including that of being a singer, dancer, writer, as well as working in the sport, nutrition, and fitness world. As a channel, I bring forward the information of my non-physical guides called Theos, whose message is always that of oneness and unconditional love. This show for me is about integrating all of my experiences and following my highest excitement, which is tapping into the truth of the universe. If you would like to find more about me and my show and my upcoming guests, as well as see many videos and channelings and teachings, you can go to aboutoneness.com. On the Enlightenment Evolution Network 2, on Saturday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 6 p.m. Pacific, the Pied Piper and Texas Rebel hosting the show Disclosure Now. Disclosure Now is the On the Edge of Our Seats show that covers all topics of disclosure, from the world's most famous and obscure UFO cases to cryptozoology, conspiracies, and all things that go bump in the night. Pied Piper started his journey in Michigan in 1993 as a preteen seeing Bigfoot and never could get enough of investigating all things paranormal. Texas Rebel is a wild Texas man who loves the same journey and has studied these same things for years. Join them as they cover all things in the human experience that just cannot be answered by anyone. Listen here and call in on the number 347-215-8586. The Pie Piper and Texas Rebel will have as their guest on November the 22nd, Michael Horn, a Billy Meyer researcher. Coming soon on Sundays at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Pacific, The Resonance and Tension, hosted by Soul and Neil Gar. The Resonance and Tension show is dedicated to all things frequency and vibration. 
they will showcase conscious musicians who infuse frequencies into their music and have set out to uplift and raise the vibration of humanity through their music. They will have in-depth discussions with various artists about their passion, purpose, and personal journey that led them to where they are now. Additionally, they will routinely have guests on the topics of free energy, technology, and other quantum modalities and technologies that are coming into existence now. The Resonance Intention is a platform for artists, musicians, and inventors to increase awareness of their personal approach in order to contribute to the paradigm shift we are currently within. And remember, you never have to miss any show on the Enlightenment Evolution Network 1 or 2. All shows are available to listen to again immediately after they air on playback. Also, now the EEN Networks 1 and 2 are archiving all videos for all of their shows weekly. From one day to three days at the latest, these shows will be uploaded on youtube.com forward slash network enlightenment. Or if you simply type Enlightenment Evolution Network in YouTube, you will find the network page. We will have individual show playlists with all of the last month's archives, and they will be updated every week. All right, back to the show. Well, that's exhausting. <laughs> that was <laughs> a quite a bit. lot of announcements. <laughs> I, 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 I hope we didn't lull everybody into, like... <laughs> An extended amount of sleep. Wake up! We're back! Well, it was great to go to the toilet, you know. It was long enough. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I hope you had your radio. You can turn your radio down now to a, to a regular volume because we are back. <laughs> I don't know why that tickles me so much. Welcome back, Roxy. Welcome back, Rose. Uh, I wanted to call you Roseanne. Welcome what? back, Crystal. I don't know why. <laughs> For a moment, I was going to call you Roseanne. Yeah, I was. You know what was interesting is, is I was running around the house and and making myself a cup of coffee and and doing a few things. I encountered my little dog Tommy, who is an interesting fellow to say the least. Um, he was a rescue dog, and so he had a challenging beginning to his life. And my dear friend Thomas over there, he has some very interesting fears. And I'm and I'm trying to work with him to help alleviate some of them. Um, one of them is that he is afraid of plastic bags. <laughs> he doesn't like them. If he sees them, he wants to run from them. Um, the other thing is he's afraid of people coming around the corner <laughs> too quickly. And he... He's also oh, afraid so of anybody cute. holding anything over their head. Like if you're carrying a backpack or a stick or anything, if you're carrying it like up around your shoulder, he literally cowers away. So, you know, that says to me that he has the experience of having been hit by something someone was holding over their head. So now he has this memory. And my idea is really to work with him on a, you know, a pet uh, telepathy way to start explaining to him that, you know, that that's not necessarily the case. But there's some fears that, you know, animals have as well that are based on an experience. And, you know, his fear now has become a um, warning mechanism for his own safety. Mm -hmm. Right. But his fear can become debilitating because we were walking on the shopping street yesterday and, you know, it's getting close to Christmas. So there's more people on the street than normal and every single one of them has a bag and or is carrying a bag, you know, over their shoulder. So Tommy... I have a little Yorkie as well, but I ended up carrying Tommy down the shopping street because he was so freaked out by all the bags, and I'm absolutely not kidding you. Aww. I know, but you know what I'm saying? So in in the respect of, I, I would, you know, in the respect of animals, 
you know, this is a learned fear, and he's not that old. I mean, he's just a little bit over a year old. So there's still some work to be done, but, I mean, it's a real fear for him. He is he is unbelievably afraid. If, if a plastic black bag, black, if, if a plastic, I can't say it, plastic bag comes flying down the road and crosses his path, he becomes unglued. And it's a plastic bag flowing in the wind. So you may say to me, what is your point, Karen? Well, my point is, the point <laughs> is, is that it's a real fear for him. Yeah, but maybe it's also the point what you wanted to say is that about... No, I know what my point is. You yeah. make your own point. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <Well, Jerry. laughs> Oh, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, no, but yeah. it's like I still love you. That's better. You yeah, it's about like like it's also about what you said earlier. That's about you have a certain kind of fears, different levels, and you're talking about Tommy is having um, f- uh, fears based on experiences. Right. You now, but you have also the old. Um, fears about just being a, 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 an animal or a living being, you know, just like coming like just an instinct. You have also fears who are based on that. Right. Coming so from the instinct. How do, we, how do we make a differentiation? There's a guy that I know that lives across the street and he or works across the street and he is afraid of dogs big time because he said a dog bit him when he was a kid. And I, so I understand that, but I have a dog not Tommy, but my little one, that's the only one he's ever been around, that's the size of a gerbil. I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, she's hardly ferocious. But he's terrified of her. So like you said yeah. earlier, have him face the fear. Invite him over mm-hmm. for a, I don't know, what do you have over there, coffee and crumpets? And have the dogs with you. And, yeah. you know, slowly do the introduction. And However you feel, don't plan it out. Just feel it in the moment for the revelation of the moment is only the highest truth. So let, allow it to be. Maybe that's an idea. Hmm? Just I perspective. face it, you know, and I face it because it's a nice example you are calling from, from this guy who's afraid of dogs. I had my first dog because I was always afraid of dogs, you know. Mm-hmm. I was bitten when oh, I was yeah. three years old by a German shepherd. And you know what my first dog was? When I was 16, it was a German <laughs> Shepherd. <laughs> Beautiful. He stayed with me for 15 years. Aww. Well, that's you, and and yeah. I think that's good. But I'm just saying, like for this guy, I've tried over, and, and I've known him for 14 years now. I, you know, I've slowly, you know, brought my dog around. He doesn't run now. <laughs> so, well, well, there you go. But I'm that's saying, an improvement. But what? A, but the point is, and, and because I, I, I can't solve this for him, but what I want to say is that, you know, what fears do you have you noticed in your life that have become debilitating in, in some way, shape, or form that keep you from trying something? Like, for instance, roller coasters. Are you afraid of them? Do you love them? Can you face it even if you are afraid? You know, there there are certain things of, you know, is it what can you make yourself do how far can you really push yourself is it really necessary well yeah i mean that that's a valid point but see that's all going to be subjective to the person like exactly. like your neighbor well right well like your neighbor is not running anymore maybe that's all he wants to experience not running anymore maybe this time around so again don't ever look at what his resolve is, and you, I think you said the perfect words. I don't, I can't solve this for him, but what I can do is offer in the moment to the point to where I feel, in other words, you, Karen, feel that there's no more, let's say, ideas of him facing this fear that you can offer. You're done. He's chosen that point of his realization, and then just keep going but about your nows. Yeah, keep going. I'm listening. No, but what I what I want to get to is I want to I, I I brought him up as an example, but basically mm-hmm. I want to talk about us, you know, mm-hmm. in this this mm-hmm. few minutes we have. I want to 
see what our fears are and maybe we can give ourselves just for maybe some people listening maybe we can um also encourage them to look at some of their fears i mean you know if you're willing to play the game with me right now name <laughs> your fear <laughs> okay well i told you yeah. today yeah but, well, wait, but wait wait don't jump ahead just a second <laughs> You are yeah. so funny. But wait a second. Let me let me introduce it. Let me introduce it. I think that it would be a good idea, especially because we're coming to January the first, right? At least in right. this airing of the show. You know, right. this is the time for resolutions. And maybe the resolution can be to face some of our fears. I think that that would be for some reason today, um the that that subject became very um it just came up for me. I know that a, f- a few years ago, around this time, I was having a lot of anxiety about a certain thing. And I put up my Christmas tree to help me re- alleviate some of that anxiety. And it's falling down this past week. I saw it symbolic. One, that it was maybe time to let it go, just sort of holding on to that. You know, because sometimes you can use something to change your mind about it because that that can also be a crutch sometimes, you know. Um, But at the same time, I, I, it started to get me thinking about, okay, what is, what are my fears now? What is, am I, if if I've cleared that, what is, what is the next thing? So the game we're going to play, if you're willing, is name your fear. (laughs) (laughs) And we can maybe together come up with some solutions of how to, Get past it. Go, go, Crystal. You t- you name your fear. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and I've already confronted it literally in my face. Well, don't I'm, give us something yeah. solved. Give us no, I, I, I haven't solved now. it yet. No, I haven't we solved it yet. We don't want a story yeah. of, oh, I no. had this fear and no. I went past it. I, I have a real fear. It's a real fear, and I haven't solved it yet, even when it was on my face. I'm scared to death of spiders. Oh. Really. Yeah, spiders. Well, I mean, there is a, you know, it is a fear that does have a purpose because some spiders, when they bite you, can hurt you. But for the most of spiders, they're, they're, you know, I don't see, I don't, you're not being stalked by poisonous spiders. So, you know, unless you were living in the jungle, it's not that rational of a fear. Well, thank you. <laughs> but I never, you know, and I literally faced my fear three months ago when a, when a spider was crawling on my face. But oh I didn't get goodness. over it, you know. It was really, <laughs> it woke me up. And I saw him crawling away. I mean, he was really big, you know. Well, so. okay. And I think that's a good fear. But I want, I want one more that's more debilitating than that. I want one, I want one that's more emotionally charged than that because i mean yes you faced a fear and a spider did did engage you and jump down on your face just to say woohoo i know yeah, but i'm still afraid of it <laughs> but i mean but on a but on a but on a level well, of something that keeps you from moving forward in life you know i i'm pretty sure you can go through your life with a healthy fear of spiders and not have it keep you from success in any way you know so Let's. I want. I want something. If Roxy, if you have one, then then I, then you go first. But I, I, I. That's what I'm looking for. Not you know. Oh, I'm afraid of you know. Stubbing well, my toe. That, that doesn't well, count. Hang, hang on now. <laughs> now wait a minute. Let me just. Don't say, debate this. You don't get to I'm debate. Not, you don't get to debate I'm, out of it. <laughs> You're so you don't get to debate. You don't get to debate out of it. Sorry, I'm I calling know. everybody on it. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You said let, let me, let me, let's say, engage that of spiders as a perspective for me on how she can overcome spiders. Because for her in this okay, now, that then, portion of herself to go is again valid. Because that's not a fair one. Go ahead. Right. Okay. <laughs> let's call it a warm up. <laughs> okay, a warm up here. <laughs> okay. So 
I had the same idea of of oh truly I I did not like uh, spiders and oh cockroaches oh my gosh especially here in Texas I mean <laughs> you know you can ride them you can you know I was like That's when I saw Charles my first one when I came like down that. here out I, I was like what what happened here what nuclear fallout made these guys this big to where they can you know you know carry you <laughs> I was like oh my god <laughs> but then. I, I gave myself a couple of cockroaches because I believed everything in my reality is not by accident. It's for me and spiders as well. And what I did is I just changed my view that they're not creepy, that they're not freaky, and it's still not completely resolved like yours. However, it's like, oh, okay, there's a spider. So what I did is I acknowledged it, but I wouldn't fear it. I would just leave it alone. Go about your now and I'll go about mine. <laughs> I love you. I'll yeah. see you later. I didn't try to kill it. I didn't try to chase it. You know, if it was a, you know, a small enough or whatever, maybe. And I and I did this. I did this like three times. I actually picked it up and it moved in my hand with a with a napkin. That freaked me out because the damn thing moved. <laughs> it was like, Bleh! but I took it outside and I let it go. And so that helped me realize that's just a creation. That's just life in another form. So I was like, I was better about it. And then I took the approach that that spider is aware of me, and I am not fearing, therefore attacking. I am loving, therefore the spider goes, "Hey, what's up? I'll talk to you later. I gotta go. Mm -hmm. I got some spiders to win. You know, I got a little lunch coming up or something." And I just imagined that and felt that, and that changed my perspective. And now, now no more spiders, no more cockroaches. Got some webs you know? to spin. Got some stuff to do. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> Thanks for checking in. I got to go. So that that changed my <laughs> my vibration about them and then it's it's really releasing. So this might be an idea for you to approach that idea of life as part of life, as part of creation, as loving it because that's a life expressing itself in that form. Booyah. Make yeah. sense? Yeah. Okay. So you now on to something was... valid. Well, no, it is valid, really. I mean, it, it reminds me of a conversation I had with um, Kirk Nielsen when I was out in Sedona with him, and we were talking. His their whole their whole thing out there is they're getting ready for um, the hybrid children that are going to come in, and also um, for you know the eventual first contact scenario. Right. And we were talking about you know, with the hybrid children situation, you know, one of the reasons, one of the other reasons other than the purpose of hybridization is that, you know, children coming in are going to be a lot more accepted than, say, adults. Because children, people are predisposed, they're pre-genetically um, disposed to like babies, like children. And there's something in our hearts for the most of us, that warms to them, you yes. know, because yes. all babies, even the even the the ones with tentacles, are pretty damn cute, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> but we were talking about what about the ones that are not cute? What about the ones that look like? And he did say spiders, or you know. Uh, Mantids, maybe, or whatever. Just you know, creepy things. Or blobby blobs. Right. You know? And the, the, that fear is one of the reasons that we haven't had our contact experiences yet. Because of, you know, and that's one of the reasons disclosure has been kept from us. Because of this idea of, at least on some levels, of the idea of the fear. Right. So part of understanding oneness, ooh, I got to plug my show in this conversation, is being willing to accept everything in its ultimate form and, and seeing it as opposed to being afraid of it as, instead of being like, oh, I'm afraid of it, seeing it as yet another marvelous, wonderful, beauteous, miracle expression of the one. 
of life. And so with the blobby blobs and the mantids and the spider people and the tarantula people, I hope there's really not such a thing. But if there are, come down and meet us. That's come meet Karen. <laughs> yeah, so come up to my house. Well, well, that's the thing. Like, I, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, to be honest, it does extend that way. You know, are we willing to accept everything as being wonderful and valid? You know, I mean, you take the, take the kind of ugliest creature on earth. Well, its mother's going to think it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Of course. You know. Of so course. the question is, how do we get there too, to to think that? And I, you know, I'm not the. I, it's so funny because now that I've been hanging out in human colony, you know, my my my, I've, I immediately start thinking of you know extraterrestrials and things like that, and I and I'm you know starting to consider them as part of the mix. But they are part of the mix. They are part of the one. They're part of all that is. Of course. So in the all that is, and knowing all that is. Accepting all that is. As I, I, think that, I think that's a miraculous what said. thing. Hmm? I, I think you're right. I think you just nailed it. Except, you know what it is. When I when I look at a spider as part of creation, as part of life, my view of it changes. When I look at yes. you know some some underground or you know dweller worm or something that makes me feel uneasy, I change my view of it, and I think that as we you know love our planet, the more and more, the more acceptance of disclosure will happen because, you know, it's the same thing, just in a different level. It's it's creation. But I think, it, you know, the fear is, 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 is even a little bit deeper with, like, aliens and stuff because they're aware, you know. They're, like, intelligent mm-hmm. idea, and they're, like, you know, we get to talk to you is where the, you know, cockroach scurries away or something like that. It doesn't get up and go, hey, you know, you got a Coke or something. So I think I think uh, <laughs> right. be funny. I, yeah. Yeah, I, I can't I wait for the commercial that comes on the Budweiser commercial. They're like, "What's <laughs> up? What's up?" Just sitting back, having a bud. <laughs> you know? Right. But I but I think I think that's I think that's what it is. It's an, it's it's the yeah. acceptance of everything is creation, and we're okay. Even if 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 this is the infancy stages of humanity waking up, this conversation changes that view. Only not only rather with the people that are listening to it, but vibrational our approach to it changes, which puts out telepathically, interconnectedly, intimately connected. If however you want to say it. And that changes mm-hmm. the view of mm-hmm. the entire self that we see as creation outside of us, but it is truly us, you know. Right. Well, I, so, I did. I I there was a. There was a. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. You're good. Okay. There was a. I've talked about it before, but I'm going to bring it up again. There was an exercise that I did, used to do, um, that Theos talked to me about. And um, when I would be traveling on this train and I would be going into a city center, I would always, I started to, they they started to talk to me about noticing vehicles of people. And they, they just, they didn't say to me, okay, Karen, we're going to do this exercise. But then I realized that they're, that they're, that the way that they were saying it to me was an exercise just because right. it became very specific. And they said, now look around at all of the vehicles around you and notice the differences between the vehicles. And I started to watch people as truly vehicles of a soul in a vehicle, you know, moving through their day. And as I started to sort of get this idea that everyone was in their body vehicle, their physical self was their vehicle, I started to to be able to look at them from the standpoint of, of an ob- observer of, oh, look, that vehicle has spiky hair, or, oh, look, that vehicle is wearing a polka-dotted dress or whatever, or, look, oh, that vehicle doesn't have an arm, or that vehicle has chosen to, you know, be a certain weight or whatever. But I got to look at them from that perspective and I really got to marvel at all the variety and creativity of the expression 
that was happening. And it became very clear to me that these self-expressions that were there were beautiful in all of their many shapes and forms. Yes. And if that can extend out to everything, I mean, it was interesting because I started to walk like on the street, uh, you know, where I was going and I was thinking, you know, some vehicles made the street, you know, and because I'm living in a very old country, I looked at some buildings that I knew were quite old and I thought, you know, some vehicles many years ago left this building for us to enjoy. And, right. and I started to think about how everybody and everything touches everything and is connected and, 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 and stuff like that. And, you know, it wasn't so much about the oneness at that point, but it was about the appreciation of all the expressions of all that is. And everything is an expression of all that is. Everything. So a spider right. is just a eight-legged, spider's eight legs? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> spider is an eight-legged expression <laughs> of all that is. And Tommy's a four-legged expression, and Apple is also four-legged princess expression, and I'm a, you know, whatever I am expression of all that Bipedal. is. But everybody's an expression of it. I'm a what? Bipedal. I'm Two a legs. bipedal expression <laughs> of all that is. Yeah. But, it, you know, it's true. And everything's an expression. The the things that we can't see, the molecules, the the ants, the dirt, the leaves, they're all in yes. all of their infinite variety expressions of all that is. I mean, it's endless, it seems. It's incredible. It's ever-changing, ever-evolving, ever-becoming. It's living, it's dying, it's growing, it's shrinking, it's breathing, it's in, it's breathing out. It's everything. Isn't it beautiful? It's all happening around us. It's incredible. Isn't it beautiful? And it's beautiful. I, love it. yeah. I know. It's, it's so freaking awesome. That spider is like, you know, he lands on Christmas Day. He's like, I'm part of all that is, and I'm and I is safe <laughs> right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you know, how exciting is that? I mean, and that's that's the thing about fear. When we don't accept another person, we're really denying Ourself. The oneness of everything, mm-hmm. of ourselves. Or the mind yourself, yeah. 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 So you go hug that spider, Crystal. You tell well, me. Well, you, you know. But honestly, though. After, you know? after that happened, mm-hmm. I never had fearful encounters with spiders again. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Well, there yeah. you go. I mean, it's changed. not to say that go swim in a shark tank because a shark is going to just come up and cuddle up to you. I mean, there are you know, there, are certain, <laughs> there are certain things, you know, that shark. you just don't need to go hug a shark. <laughs> Use your fear wisely, but but instead of it being a fear, just don't do it because it's probably not healthy. You know what I mean? But don't right. be afraid of it. Because I don't know when you're going to be a shark tank and get to hug a shark, but you never know. I, but you I don't recommend know. it. But but, right. but, it's, it's, but there's no reason to be afraid of it. That's that's the point. There's no reason to be afraid of it or of it or of anyone. Absolutely. Okay, I'm done. End of the show. Good night everybody. <laughs> <laughs> You're so silly. Karen out. <laughs> Just We're being silly, you know, but it's but it's a real subject. But it's, beautiful. it's a real Oh, yeah, of course. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It all comes down, you know, all of it comes down right. to the oneness and love. It all comes down to it. No matter what, what the, you know, you know the, the thing about six degrees of separation from, mm-hmm. um, Kevin from Bacon. who's the actor? <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Bacon. Bacon. Mm-hmm. Well, everything is six degrees of separation from love. I, 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 I'm going to start a new expression. Because it Six is. degrees of separation. I can trace so anybody. Do you know, I can trace anybody back to Kevin Bacon. Give me a person and I'll trace them back. Go ahead. Give them to me. <laughs> Name anybody. George, George <laughs> Hamilton. <laughs> George Hamilton? Sure. <laughs> He's <Okay>. anybody. <laughs> you know, the guy with the fake tan. <laughs> the actor, the overtanned actor? Yes. <laughs> is that who you're talking about? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. George Hamilton.
Hamilton was on the love boat, right? Yes. The love mm-hmm. boat um, was um, on, and let me see. George Hamilton was on the love boat. The actor who played Gopher uh-huh. became the, um, he became a politician in California, um, and therefore he knew Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hey, Arnold Schwarzenegger was in some movie with somebody that was in a movie with Kevin Bacon. I I can't do it, but I know that it's true. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, anything, everything is at least maybe not even six degrees separated, but at least no more than maybe possibly three degrees separated from love. It all comes back down to oneness and love. That's it. If you know that, yeah. you know everything. Yeah. And it changes just, your perspective. Sure. It and changes if it your expose, perspective. And if that perspective exposes a fear that it was latent inside of you that you never noticed before, awesome. So then just yeah, like, exactly. you know, Crystal and you and everyone else who was <clears throat> the bulliers, the being the bully, ah. the ones that were bullied that faced their fears, do that. Because it is only the fear before you're actually facing that where fear exists. Until mm-hmm. you take action upon it, fear dissipates, and now you're in the game. And that's the moment of experience. It's not fear, because experience does not feel. Experience is the moment, and that is giving you what it truly is. And it's not fear, because fear is an illusion. Booyah. Exactly, because there are people, you know, not other, there aren't people only that are that have been bullied, but there are people, like you said, that have been the bulliers, sure. have been the aggressors to people. Yeah. yeah. You know, they also are, you know, worthy of love. Oh. And once they understand yeah. their love, once they understand that they are love and that they're part of the one, you know, you the thing is, people are who they are right now. And Bingo. if that's who you were in the past, then that's who you were in the past. But we're but interested not in the who now. you are There's only now. now. Exactly. There's only yeah. now. And see, and there's another big fear. People are afraid. It's easier to view someone else, a friend, a family member, and I know this happened around Thanksgiving. People were always saying, oh, boy, here comes Thanksgiving dinner, and you know they're going to talk about this, and they're going to be that way, and that's who they were then, so they create that person now. Look at the person Mm -hmm. now and don't fear what they're going to do because that was what their action was according to the past. Let them Mm -hmm. be themselves, and you change your view of them now view them as creation, as love, as oneness, and then you get a different version of that person. Their parents, he might be the same. They may be, be caught in their own little rut of self-expression of vanity or separation or criticism. Whatever cause a rift in you does not matter. But your approach to it changes, so your view of them changes, and your perception of all that is, of course, only enlightens itself. I love that. Never yeah. look in the past. When, when I went- everyone's changed. Keep going. Go ahead. No, I, whenever, whenever I went, when I was in the U.S. just in August, and you know, I was there for two months, and I got to spend a lot of time with my family, with my mother, and I got to spend some really incredible time with my brother, um, because now he and I are both older. And of course, when you're younger, you know, you you argue and whatever. And my brother's an amazing guy. He's really a great guy, and we had so much healing. Not that we were at odds with each other. But there's some things that we talked about um, that we had experienced growing up and some some things that my brother had um, understood in a certain way and had shaped him in his life in a certain way. And exactly. we were able to, to let go of some of those things. And, and it was really amazing for he and, he and his and my relationship because – the understanding that we had each other's back was really there and that we were, you know, there for each other, maybe the really understanding that in such a strong way for maybe the first time to really know that we could count on each other. But what I want to say is that, you know, we had grown up, we grew up in a certain situation and, and like everybody does, 
and we were looking at our life now versus then. And what I had said to him was, you know, if I, when I come back to this city where I grew up, Charleston, South Carolina, and I look at how I am now, and I look at the maturity of myself, but how I've changed, I've come to grips with myself, and I've, you know, worked through a lot of stuff. I can't, when I come home, even though it's the same town, it's not the same. So if I come back expecting any of the of the same things to be there, they're really not there because I'm not the same person. Mm-hmm. Bingo. So there's nothing that's to come right. back to that's not who I am now. I enjoyed exactly. being home more than I've ever enjoyed it in my life because I'm better now than I've ever been as far as my knowing of myself, my understanding of things. So the change wasn't changing the situation there or, or altering anything there. It was all internal. It was all me. Well, and that's all the there change. is. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's but all that realization is. was so very clear. And I had a conversation with my mom as well. And I said, you know, I can never look at you and blame you for anything that went on in our past. Right. Because right. you're not even the person that any of those things happen with. And I'm not talking about anything big. I'm just talking about normal family, mother-daughter stuff. I'm just saying if I was holding on to any of that, it doesn't make any sense because you're not even that person anymore. Right, and neither so are they. I could, I could never – Right. exactly, yeah. yeah. And so it, it was such a realization in a in a really nice way that, you know – I, I could go home. You know, they say you can't go home again. Well, yes, you can. You can go of home again, you but can. your home again that you're going to experience is mm-hmm. going to be who you are. Exactly. You know? That's yeah. how the mirror is so perfect. I love it. It is perfect so, in that way. What's your what's your brother's name? David. David. How is David? He is... Four years younger than me. How so, no, how, how is he? Forty four. Is he married? Oh, he's awesome. <laughs> he's married. Well, he's not. He's not uh, married. He's, he's getting married. He's engaged. Oh, whatever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, you know, <laughs> I didn't see where that was going. <laughs> he's awesome. Though. He's got an amazing. He's got an amazing uh, fiance wife. Slash wife. I already consider her my sister in law. Yeah, just call her wife. Yeah. She's Aww. awesome. She's really cool. She came out and saw me when we were in Vegas. We had a really good time. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, she's really good. So, um, yeah, sorry, he's not available. <laughs> just checking. Oh, hey, Always looking for know. a little opening. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't realize. I, I was like, he's now I've announced his age. And I've announced. <laughs> Inevitably, my age by saying he's four years younger than me. <laughs> right. <laughs> me and you are the same age now. I, I caught up to you. Wow. Well, you're going to pass me. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's talk about that. That's the fear. Age. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not so. Yeah. I mean, it's not debilitating. I'm getting to be okay with them. You know what? Can I tell you? Let me say this. I have, for the first time, and this is the truth, in the last um, couple weeks, just decided I cannot diet any more. I love it. (laughs) I love it. Congratulations. I can't do it. I refuse (laughs) to diet. I am not dieting. (laughs) And you know what? I didn't gain 100 pounds after I ate dinner. Nope. I didn't. My pants did not, my, the button of my pants did not go flying across the room and break the window when I tried to, you know, I am just, I have been eating meals the whole week, the whole two couple weeks, and I, my weight is the same as it was uh, yes. uh, a couple, but I, I, I had, coming from the, the fitness bodybuilding world and, and everything, being so, you know, being a, da- having been a dancer, being so hyper conscious about weight, I can right. say one of my biggest fears has been food. Mhm. Truly, truly, food. 
you know. You show me a carb and you'll see a girl go running like she's never run away. But I'm not afraid of it now. It's incredible. I, I don't know what shifted, but I just decided I can't diet Do it any anymore. <clears throat> this is what I, I talk can't. about with people. Let me give you this perspective. When we mm-hmm. as humans, what mm-hmm. I understand from my perspective, we are the explorers, venturers of the unknown. Limitation is staying secure, mediocre, for fear of, I don't know, whatever goes along with security, house, job, family, acceptance, prosecution right. from the you know, scrutiny, it doesn't matter. But when you're done with something, and you've experienced to the point you just can't do it, you just say, I'm done. That whole release will only bring in what you want, what you are about that. What I mean about that is you are not gaining the weight because you're done being the diet. So there's no fear of you gaining weight. Make sense? Right. So you won't right. gain weight. You just are eating what you choose. You know, and I've had the people say, you're so lucky to have the body you have. I've been, you know, 125 pounds since senior in high school. You know, I had my hula stages in military, being the hyper male, wanting to get big and lift the weights. And then I gave that up because it was, it was for no purpose that I found out later. Can I tell you, a lot of people hate you right now. <laughs> right. Sorry, Robbie. Right now. I'm a size four, a five, seven, one, right 125. But here's what the, here's the thing. People kept on telling me. Well, when you hit this age, your stomach's going to get this, or you get that beer belly, or, and all this stuff, and you'll gain it. And I was like, no. And whenever I got to that age, I would all of a sudden realize, oh, I'm supposed to be fat by now. You know, I'm supposed to be overweight. I'm supposed to be this. I'm not. And I always just, I had this thing. I am the city dump. I eat anything anyone puts in front of me at any time, and my body stays exactly like this because that's the perception of my body. I don't fear getting oh, wait, overweight or, or let's say losing my apparency. I love how Bashar said it. Bashar said, if you believe that you are overweight, listen to that again. If you believe that you are overweight, no diet will ever help you because you believe you are overweight. Therefore, you will always perceive that of overweight. No matter what diet you eat, no matter how you change and do an exercise, you will always be overweight because that is your core belief of yourself. But when you're done being overweight, you're going, all right, I'm not overweight anymore. Your view of yourself changes, your diet changes, and you don't have to diet. You just eat what you want in the moment, and you get the body that you want in your mind. Whatever the mind says, believes, sees. I yeah. That's that that's how it I works for me. I go ahead. Yeah. No, no, I will say though, you know, when I when I'm not worrying about it what I eat, I am still choosing healthier foods. I'm not only sure. eating I'm eating whatever I want, but I'm enjoying it, whatever I'm eating, and I'm not like freaked out about it. But I will say that I'm not existing either on, you know, ho hos and ding dongs. I, I sure. still think because that those don't necessarily make me feel good. I feel good when well, I eat a healthy salad or something. Exactly. But, and follow what your body yeah. tells you. Exactly. But exactly. don't don't constrain it and take it away from yourself to some image of what you're supposed to be. Know what you are, the beauty in your mind, and let that body become that of yourself and enjoy life. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Exactly. So that for me has been huge. Really oh, huge. I, bet. I mean, that That's is for a, me nice a huge thing, you know, just to be like, <gasps> and next yeah. week I'm baking Christmas cookies. So oh, I would, you know, normally I would be fasting during <laughs> the time I would be making Christmas cookies, but I'm going to be baking Christmas cookies, uh, you know, for a couple of days next week. So not that I'm going to eat them all because I'll feel no, sick you're if I do that, some. but. Oh, I'm sending you some. Oh, sorry. Yes. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Sorry. How did I ever? How did I ever misunderstand that that was the case? I don't yeah. know. But anyway, it's so. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I missed that. <laughs> you just got here. It's okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. 
Yeah, but anyway, but that was a big, but for me, that's a fear. And the fear is not just the food, but then it comes down to the fear of how I look, how I, you know. Exactly. You know, and I just wonder, have I just gotten, but they, they do say when you reach a certain age, you just become comfortable with yourself and you start to not yeah. give up. How did he do about what anybody thinks? But at the right. same time, I, I want to look nice. It's not that I don't want to look nice. It's not that I don't want to, you know, look pretty or whatever. But I think, well, then I just have to exercise more. If I'm going to, you know, I just have to exercise more. And I feel great when I'm exercising, so that's no big loss. You know, right. it's if not that's like your exercising joy, is though. a bad thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. If it's your joy, if it's effortless, and that gives you the apparency of the look you want to be happy with yourself, then do it. But what yeah. what, what kills me is forcing yourself <gasps> into some idea. You? you know, yeah. that's that's not the way to do it. Be what your body tells you. Your body is more brilliant than you can ever imagine. But we don't allow it because we're listening to the outside of authority of what we're supposed to look like or talk like or act like or dress like or be like. When we are our own our, our own creators and we can naturally be beautiful to ourselves, what we appear as, and that will only resonate love in the mirror, and the mirror sees love. It's like booyah. Make sense? Yes. So for everybody that's sitting there going, well, that's fine if you're already whatever, but it's a it's a matter of perspective. If you if you and, and okay, I you know I'm new to this, so I'm not gonna I'm not by any means the authority. But what I will say, what I have found, and I have a whole lifetime of doing it one way, which is you know don't eat this, don't eat that, fast. Uh, I, th- I fasting is a very good thing. Don't I don't want to take anything away from fasting. I think it's important to do. But just as far as like constant restriction, constant um, observance of everything, sometimes it can be debilitating. You know, you go out to eat with friends and you can't eat anything because, you, you know, you don't want to eat this. You don't want to eat that. You're not going to go here. You're not going to eat it. It's exhausting. You can't enjoy your moment because you can't experience the moment because you restricted yourself so much. So absolutely, I, I just you know, do you know what I mean? Have you ever been anywhere and the person's like, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't go here, I can't go there. And it's like, why did you even show up? Why are you here? <laughs> what did you come here to do? Other than deny no. yourself. You're getting alien you know. again. Do you hear that, Crystal? Yeah. Yeah. Son of a gun. Be right back. You still there, Crystal? I think we're all on standby. Do, 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 do. I'm eating myself now. Mm-hmm. We're back. <laughs> awesome. You know, you know what's so silly about this thing for Blog Talk Radio, and I don't know why I start to sound like an alien, but I couldn't the Skype uh, the Skype keypad. Every time I'd start to dial on it, it would disappear behind the Skype window. I mean, behind the Blog Talk open window browser so I couldn't see the host number to type it in so I was like switching back and forth and then it was like you haven't typed in your your, your host pin goodbye and I'm like oh crap <laughs> I have to call back in. right you weren't fast enough yeah I wasn't fast enough because every time I would click the one window it would disappear behind the other one <laughs> anywho <laughs> anyway so tonight we've talked about fear. And what is the conclusion that we've come to? One, be yourself. Two, Face understand that everything is part of all that is. And you are part of the all that is. And if you can be fascinated by that, 
then you will realize there's really nothing to fear and you can appreciate all of it and love mm-hmm. all of it. Even the creepy, gross, gross spiders and the, they're not gross, but the creepy, you know, things. Just, they are just different. They're just different. They're different expressions. Right. You know what? You know what's 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 really cool. I thought about. It's like mm. I know that I create my reality. That is my perspective. That is my individual knowing that has been and now wisdom. So whatever right. is in my reality, you created is, it. I I created it. It's love. It, yes. It's that of creation. So that in and of itself, just that awareness changes the perception of everything that I feared before. It lightened it up, so to speak. There's still some aspects that we're getting through. I understand that. But it's me creating that moment for me. I love it. Makes sense? Well, it's, it's all a process. I mean, if we, if we understood it all, we wouldn't be here. We come here to figure it all out. You know, yeah. we come here to have the different experiences and to um, forget everything, come in and, and try to sort of you know, get from the the beginning to the finish line every time. So in every lifetime, we 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 go through we, we, this stuff. But in this lifetime, we are all here. At least the three of us, um, and possibly the people listening, we're saying we want to have the full understanding. So part of the full understanding is accepting all that is, loving all that is, and knowing that we are, in fact. One. Oh, most certainly. Love it. Oh, most certainly. So, <laughs> we have two minutes. Let's do uh, some some things. Uh, Roxy is on Pyramid One Network on Mondays. Your show is mm-hmm. from what time to what time? Um, it's 7, 7 to 8 Eastern Time. Eastern Standard, PM. 7 to, 7 8, to 8 Eastern eight. Standard Time? Mm-hmm. And it's um, called... Pyramid One. Mm-hmm. Pyramid One, Odyssey, Odyssey of, of Ascension, Odyssey with of Roxanne Ascension, yeah. Swainhart. Mm-hmm. You can find Roxanne Swainhart on your website. List your website. Um, just go to, I just tell them when to go to YouTube, Odyssey of Ascension on YouTube, and my direct link is there on the banner at top that goes to my personal website. Perfect. So it's the, and yeah. That's Pyramid it. One is PyramidOneNetwork.com. We have the Enlightenment Evolution Network on Blog Talk Radio. This has been About Oneness. You can find me on AboutOneness.com. Crystal is on Orandaya.nl. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. Orandaya, awesome. spell it. Spell it. Mm-hmm. O-R- O-R-A-N-G, and then a minus, and then D-H-Y-A. Dot NL. Yeah. Okay. But it's under construction right now, my website. Okay, don't go to her website. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's in, it's in the air, but still some things are constructed. Okay. Well, I love everybody. I love everyone. And we will be on next week. I'm not sure who my guest is, but we will see you next weekend. So I love you all. And I'll see you very soon. Love you guys. <laughs> really love you, Crystal. Love, love you, Karen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye